button to welcome Pierre Cloity, Commercial Director with BBC Studio. And this panel will be moderated by uh, Lerato. And please, Lerato, the screen is all yours. Thank you very much to you, Shana, and the warmest welcome to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, captains of industry and colleagues. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce to you our one-on-one -on -one session where we're looking at the impact of COVID-19 on the broadcast news media space. Now, it really doesn't need to be said that a year ago, the world was shaken by a virus that was little known. The science was really misunderstood. And as it spread the world over, it created a really frightening and terrifying scenario. Ultimately, it led to the shutdown of global economies, of schools, and really just changed life as we know it. It also transformed the way in which we as broadcasters um, went about our business, um, pursued our craft, and really just spoke to audiences the world over. I mean, I can testify to the fact that I've had to set up um, um, you know, cameras and lighting and create a mini studio on the home front. So it's really been transformative. What we don't know is whether the situation, these changes really do herald a brand new normal or are they a bump in the road or will we ever see life the same way as we once did. And so my conversation here today is with Pierre Kluter. He is the commercial director for BBC Studios in the Africa and the Middle East region. And he's going to talk us through some of those challenges as we've all experienced them in the media and broadcast space, and also the opportunities as they exist. But before we hear from Pierre, let's take a look at how the BBC has navigated these uncharted waters. That's a synopsis of the talent that we have from the east to the west and right here in sub-Saharan Africa. In a very difficult year, we've continued to bring you the news. We've broken the news for you. We've provided the analysis as best as we could. And we never, ever calculated the personal risk to ourselves as BBC reporters and correspondents. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce to you um, my conversation with Pierre Kluter and to introduce him to you. He is the commercial director for BBC Studios in Africa and the Middle East region. He has extensive experience uh, working within the broadcast and commercial side of the broadcast landscape, launching various TV channels, uh, platforms. He's worked for Supersport. He was the um, digital sports director at Kweze Entertainment. He was also the acting chief executive there. He's worked for Mnet, um, Ericsson. He's launched uh, Nuvu for Ericsson. And um, over the past 18 years, he's done many, many projects. I think one of the more exciting ones is on the entertainment side. He's the man credited with having brought to the African continent the African versions of Survivor and MasterChef. Uh, Pierre holds a bachelor's degree in commerce from the University of Johannesburg, and it is my pleasure to speak to you. May I just urge you, if you've got any questions around this topic, coronavirus and the broadcast media space, please post your questions on the chat forum on our next CEO, uh, next TV CEO uh, conference site. 
Pierre, let's talk about the year that this has been. We thought that the worst would have been over, but coronavirus is still with us, albeit the world is expecting a rollout of vaccines, which suggests that there is a silver lining. But in it all, there's been so much complexity, trying to understand what is the coronavirus? What is the science behind it? Where did it originate? How quickly has it spread? The variants of the virus, and then understanding government policies even at the level of multilateral, such as the World Health Organization, and looking at the interventions. And in bringing the news to audiences worldwide, it's been incumbent on um, news journalists and news presenters to do the right thing. There's also been a lot of misinformation. How has the BBC ensured that we tell the story as accurately as is possible, we fact check and we're credible? Absolutely, thank you, Lerata. Um, as you said, you know, so many changes have happened in this space and, you know, we're all living through this coronavirus. It doesn't only affect a few people, it affects everybody. So, you know, news has become more and more relevant over the last couple of years, specifically with this uh, pandemic. And we have seen more and more people coming to news to get the information. You know, um, television has increased and digital consumption of news has increased dramatically um, across you know, all the digital platforms, including social media. And, you know, BBC World News is right there at the front of the uh, firing line, actually bringing that news to all the platforms. So the two main aspects here is relevance. And obviously with this, every, the news is so relevant at the moment, we have to get this information. It's super important that we get the right information. And secondly is trust. You know, I want to delve in quite a bit into the trust um, that BBC World News has with audiences because trust is so important across so many different aspects, not only for news, but for other channels, but it's absolutely critical for a news channel and a news brand and source to be trusted. So, you know, how do we actually build this trust? How do we ensure that there's trust in the market and with our audiences? And basically we have done for, at a BBC World News level, some trust initiatives. And these trust initiatives make sure that we can sift out fake news from real news and ensure we don't have the wrong news coming to the audience. And, you know, BBC World News has a great reputation. We've been ranked as the most trusted globally um, news source in the whole world. So across all territories, English speaking specifically, we are extremely uh, high in the trust environment and we need to keep that up um, and we do believe that this is a great asset not just for uh, BBC World News but for the platforms that we're on because people will come there and they'll realize this is actually a place where it's safe and they can get the right information. So some of these initiatives to combat fake news is a specialized unit called the disinformation unit um, and it's a pop-up unit that is set up to share intelligence pool resource, resources and maximize the impact of the right um, information. This is especially done for this pandemic um, environment. And we have been working with this now and it's really actually sifted out some, some bad information that we'd be able to highlight to audiences. We also have a reality check team that publishes um, some information globally on a weekly basis um, to highlight the disinformation stories, stories that are fake because they can also spread quite easily and virally and people might believe it. We actually publish uh, information that says these stories are actually uh, wrong and they are fake. So we actually do that on a weekly basis and we have a, a unit and a team that actually does this as a permanent um, scenario. And we also, has, um, we also have some anti-disinformation partnerships now, this is actually really exciting because we not only having this um, initiative across major technology platforms, but we also do it with artificial intelligence. And we have a uh, artificially intelligence partnership that look at AI across different categories. And we pick up all the areas where misinformation and disinformation might actually pop, pop up. And we can check this uh, with our third initiative, which is called Project Origin, which actually goes and finds the source of the information, makes sure it's trustworthy and it's the real source, not uh, edited or um, 
if there's any funny business in trying to manipulate the, the data, this project actually goes and look at the source of the origin, make sure that it's real and true. And then the last thing we actually put together on, a web, uh, on our website, uh, Africa Coronavirus Verification Database, where mm -hmm. audiences can go directly onto the website and find what is safe and what is false and make sure people have the right information. So, you know, we have all these initiatives because we are so, we, we believe in trust, we believe it's the, the core and the backbone of uh, broadcast news, but also of uh, any news source. And these benefits expand not only to our own channel, but also to the platforms and distribution, distribution partners and advertisers that link up with us and partner with us. Thanks for that intervention, uh, Pierre. So for what I'm hearing from you, BBC has really been working with the AI bots to ensure that there's fact-checking verification and that the BBC brand upholds its uh, credibility and its mantra of bringing people the right news uh, first. And because of that, I think um, it really has led to many big name players being willing to speak to the BBC during the last year. It's always been that case, but in the last year, an unprecedented year, we've had numerous uh, newsmakers in politics, in business and in academia willing to share their insights and their knowledge about a really difficult year uh, that was before us. And here are some of them. If there is a war, then I do not think anybody will be safe in our region. I do have a voice that I can use, and um, how do I use that in a positive way? Many problem is our own creation. This is an emergency. This is an existential crisis. I don't want to just, you know, um, have my face in the paper or have my name as the patron. I want to do more than that. When big names talk, they talk to the BBC. Just a snippet there of some of the big names who have featured on the BBC in the last year. Pierre, we've spoken about what's happening in newsrooms. Can we talk about what happens behind the scenes by way of the commercial impact of coronavirus and how the commercial divisions, you people who've got to generate some revenue for various news channels, have had to adapt to this changing world? You're absolutely right. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we've actually seen a positive impact from a viewer perspective when it comes to news. And basically a lot of general entertainment channels also have seen a big, a big up uh, lift in viewership when it comes to television viewing, but also digital viewing. Um, you know, across the board, people are hungry for, for content They're at home. You know, they spend more time uh, in front of the televisions or in front of their screens and their phones. So some, uptake and uh, positive trends when it comes to viewing and, and numbers but you know um, we also at the same time seen quite a decline in advertising revenues and this is understandable um, you know brands are cutting back a little bit you know they're unsure about the future they you know people are not spending as much so you know there's pressure on on economies so we have seen declines in advertising revenue so how do we actually balance and help um, advertisers and brands get back into a more normalized situation. And we're working with brands in that. But more importantly, we're actually also working very closely with our platforms because platforms are really critical to make sure that the, the right news gets out, but also that we can uh, give some value to the industry. So the first thing that we've done is we've actually extended over this period and, and over the, the, the peak of the corona period, the, the um, reach of BBC World News and a lot of our, our partners actually dropped it down into tears and made it more open. More people could actually get the news and get the right news and especially around coronavirus. Uh, we also made available educational videos for, uh, for the audiences um, through our partners where we actually uh, enable audience to learn more about the, the virus and, and other aspects so they can be educated because education is key when it comes to combating the virus and other aspects of business. So, you know, I want to come back a little bit to the trust because, you know, 
audiences and especially in the commercial side, you can understand that if there's a lot of pressure on the on the industry and on the, on the economy, yeah. things go down. You know, there's definitely a decline in consumer confidence. And the one area that's been um, researched quite a bit is the bounce back. You know, which brands bounce back better and quicker. And this comes back to trusted brands. Um, and BBC World News is that trusted brand. And we are partnering with other brands to lift and have a halo effect and ensure that audiences come back to, to their products and see their products. And that is how we actually working very closely with our partners and our, and our brands that advertise with us to bring them back to the normal or a little bit more to a normal environment. Yeah, I just want to remind you that we are uh, pressed for time. So um, let's just talk very briefly about the news media. We've spoken about the reportage aspects of it, news gathering, you know, sifting through the, the real from the fake and how we tell stories. But as a genre, when people are spoiled for choice and people can um, look to many and multiple news sources and, in, and, and documentaries and other kinds of uh, fora where they can access information, they can go to social media, they can, you know. How has the new genre changed in the world we live in today? And how will it change with subscriptions and pay TV entering the fray? That's a great question. And I think the main thing here is that we live in an ecosystem um, when it comes to media, you know, and there's been changes coming for many, many years. We've seen uh, so many changes in the television space and also in the news space where, you know, originally it was print and TV and is migrated more to digital. And we're seeing that that is accelerated. So more people are moving to towards digital news, but it's not the one or the other. People are still highly engaged in television news. And we see that more than 60% of our audience actually get their first source from television and they get run about 30% from their first source is digital. So there's still a uh, gravity towards television news, but it's an ecosystem. And BBC World News plays in the whole ecosystem. Make sure that wherever you are, whatever you need, we actually provide the right news on the right platform um, at the right time for you. So I think you need to look at it as a holistic view and not as one or the other. And that is what our main objective is. Well, you've uh, referenced so often credibility being important and people keep migrating to the BBC because it is a brand they believe in. Well, let's see if what Pierre is telling us is really the truth. Let's see what that brand equity really is about. Okay. Fine, okay. Three. One more thing, Tom and Haba. Yeah? Okay. We're living in a news story like no other, one which has made my basement, my kitchen, my studio. It's a truly global story. With some of us in lockdown, while others are enjoying more freedom. And no matter where we are, it touches every part of our lives. Work, family, well-being. Meaning nobody knows what normal means anymore. It's your story, my story, everyone's story. A story story of struggling economies, of businesses desperate to survive, of communities coming together. It's the most human of stories. Indeed, it might be the biggest news story of our lives. And to understand a truly global story like this one, you need a truly global news provider. And of course, the BBC mantra is live the story, humanize that story to show that it affects all of us, irrespective of class, culture, or creed. Now, uh, by way of wrapping up our conversation, Pierre, I'd like us to go back to some of the points you were raising earlier on about the changing media landscape, um, the entry of pay TV, streaming services, uh, new digital platforms, and different mechanisms through which people can consume um, news and entertainment and the offerings for the audiences at large. With this changing consumer behavior, what opportunities do you think exist 
for those in the new space because you know we've heard that Netflix for instance in terms of entertainment streaming has just about doubled if not tripled its subscription just in the last year alone people looking for escapism people looking for it for entertainment do those figures even match when it comes to the news media that's you know especially when you talk about SVOD service and digital services like Netflix, um, they have grown significantly, but overall they're still fairly small compared to your television viewing. So, you know, in perspective, we are seeing growth and migration to digital, which is important. And there's definitely opportunities in the digital space. And I think even more so in the uh, in the web space and the other free app space, which we which BBC World News is in. Um, trying to, to give viewers that content that they need. So the most important thing for me, I would say, is to understand your market very well. And then secondly, understand what they want and when they want it, and then build a service that is actually going to give them that service in the best way. And BBC World News is really picking up on that, and that's where we think that brands should partner with us, number one, but also we are partnering with our affiliates to also enable this scenario for them. Um, and my last comment would be, as a brand that people are listening to, to this um, webinar, think about your own brand. How trusted is your own brand? What do you need to do to build your trust in the market? Mm -hmm. And um, you can get some good learnings from BBC World News, I presume, obviously what we've spoken about, but put yourself in those shoes of the consumer. Do they trust you? Will they come back to you? And, you know, there's a few little aspects around that. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but figure out what your brand trust is, and then you can look at partners and ways to increase that brand trust with the audience. Okay, we've run out of time. However, I'm just going to take the liberty and I'm going to ask Shana after to forgive me. I challenge you to answer this in a 30 second news soundbite. A question came in, how does the TV news programs align with the increasing consumption of on-demand content? Okay, so basically, as I said earlier, it's a bit of an ecosystem. So you do not throw out your linear with your digital consumption. And as we are seeing linear in increasing over COVID, we're also seeing digital increasing over COVID dramatically. And BBC World News has got a variety of platforms that we use to actually bring our news to the audiences. And I think that's very important. So not only on linear, but catch up, VOD, on web, on app, you know, you have all of these environments that you want to play in. So that is where the audiences are. So follow your audiences, make sure you deliver the right service to them. And I think that's the same for other services. Just understand that audience and how they're moving so you can keep track with it. Thank you for your time, Pierre Kluter, the commercial director for BBC Studios in the Africa and the Middle East region. That concludes our one-on-one -on -one conversation and the issues that he's raising on on-demand and content generation are issues we'll be pursuing later on in the day. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more. It is now over to Shana and see you later. Thanks for that too. Protesters are now trying to break away through and they are spraying water cannon it's laced with chemicals so you can really smell the tear gas in it <laughs>